there and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 4 review. And today we're going to be talking about the latest episode to drop, Senti Bubbler. And coming into this episode from the trailers, I wasn't all that excited, as based on what I saw, I thought they were going to immediately backtrack from the ending of Optigami. But I'm quite happy to say I was mistaken in that assumption, and this actually turned out to be a pretty good episode, and actually served as a really good follow-up. That's something I've noticed this season. The writers are starting to try and link together the events of previous episodes and set up future plot points for future episodes. It's not always perfect, but it's a start, and I think it bodes well for the future of the show. Anyway, we start off the episode with Marinette sitting down to dinner with Alia's family before she notices that Trix is randomly sitting on the table, not caring that people can see. She attempts to reprimand Alia, stating that Trix and the Miraculous need to be kept a secret, before Alia denies her and calls her Ladybug in front of everybody. She denies it, but they all brush her off, and then Chloe appears and calls her a hypocrite for not keeping her identity secret, and yet not letting Chloe stay as Queen Bee for the same reason. Then there's a knock on the balcony sliding door and Shadow Moth comes in holding the miracle box and thanking Alia for betraying Ladybug. She tries to transform, but Tiki refuses and tells her that she shouldn't have trusted Alia. Before Cat Blanc randomly appears stating that there's now no more secrets so they can be together. Shadow Moth then demands her miraculous and everybody zombie walks towards her as Trix taunts her before she wakes up screaming in her bed. And I'll be honest, usually dream fakeouts are pretty stupid. But this was actually really funny, and really captured the ridiculousness of dreams. Like how random is it that Chloe was at dinner with Alia's family, or that Shadow Moth came in person to fight Ladybug, or that Cat Blanc was there instead of Cat Noir? To be honest, the only missing nightmare fuel was Lila. Marinette, being the calm, rational, and self-assured person that she is, immediately caves into her dream, yelling about how she shouldn't have given Alia the miraculous, and for some reason running to check that the miracle box is still in her secret hidey hole. Tiki then tries to reassure her and tell her her dream could never happen because Alia's a loyal friend, before Waze for some reason throws Trix under the bus and calls her mischievous. Bit harsh there, Waze. It's one thing to be mischievous, and it's another thing to sell out your friends and family to a deranged supervillain just so you can say, Haha, I'm so random. Also, a bit hypocritical from Waze of all Kwamis, a Kwami so stupid that he tried to get Master Fu's attention despite the fact that Fu had lost all memory of him and the Miraculouses as well as the fact that Waze had promised Marinette that he wouldn't do anything to make Fu suspicious. He initially came across as the wise and rational Kwame when Fu was his owner, but clearly he's almost like all the others. Waze needs to know his role and stay in his own lane. And even still, it's not like Trix was making trouble at Marinette's house. It's not like they're always locked in the box anymore, so why are they all freaking out? This, of course, does nothing to aid Marinette's neurotic worrying and sends her into a panic, beginning to believe that her dream was a prophecy, and so she runs through the bakery, which has customers in it, wearing her pajamas. Premium cringe. She'll be waking up in the middle of the night in 10 years, thinking of this moment. She then turns up at Alia's house, not knocking or ringing the bell or anything, just letting herself in like a burglar or a serial killer. She notices Alia and her family looking for something, and instead of thinking, oh, they must have lost a pet or something, you know, like a normal person would, she assumes that her best friend has blabbed to her family about the top secret magical spirit which lives in her necklace and allows her to turn into a superhero at will. Then again, this is coming from a person who ran through Paris and barged into her friend's house because her dream told her to. Perhaps it is a little too much to assume a logical response. And yes, I know she has added responsibilities becoming the Guardian, but I swear, Fu ruined her life and destroyed her mental health by giving her the box. As Marinette continues to panic, she then notices a massive spider sitting on a spoon in a pot, and then has a very disproportionate response considering the spider's pretty far away. Everybody laughs at her and she realises that they were actually looking for the spider all along, not the magical Kwame. Whoopsie! Oh well, at least she didn't waste time and embarrass herself by turning up unannounced at her friend's house in her pyjamas in front of the whole family. Oh wait, she did. We then hear Nino's voice from the bathroom calling out asking whether it was safe for him to come out. And then they tease him for being scared, but if I was him, I would have just gone home. It's one thing to panic when a spider is not really near you, but you can still see it. But he would have had no idea where it was. Just leave, man. Go get a milkshake and come back later. And seriously, who the hell would want a tarantula as a pet? Sorry if I'm calling you out, but what is the appeal? It's not like they're cute or cuddly. They don't love you, and they hardly even think at all. They're just a furry demonic hellspawn that's one of nature's big mistakes. And then the dad says it's from the zoo. Like, what? What are you thinking taking home a spider from the zoo you work at? It's not yours. And it's not like it needs around-the-clock care like a baby animal. It's a spider. I feel like he could get into trouble for this. 
And also, I just remembered that this is the guy that got akumatized at the zoo when Kim was mocking him like in season one. Who the hell openly mocks the parent of one of their classmates to their face? I mean, who the hell mocks a zookeeper at the zoo in the first place? But surely Kim knew who he was. If not, awkward reunion. Getting back on track, Alia asks Marinette whether she came for any particular reason before Marinette hints at the fact that she came to check Alia hadn't lost the miraculous or tricks. And Alia responds to this by saying that she doesn't lose things people lend her before her sister throws her under the bus and says that she lost the spider. But there is a loophole. Nobody lent her the spider, the dad brought it home from the zoo. So unless Alia was walking around after her dad put the tarantula in her hand, which I seriously doubt, it doesn't count. Get those facts checked, Nora. Marinette then asks to talk to her privately, and for some reason, Nino thinks privately means with him as well. But thankfully, Alia tells him to wait outside. Marinette then tells Alia about her insane dream, and despite Alia attempting to calm her, she continues listing off reasons she's on edge, in particular because Shadow Moth knows who Rina Rouge is. And if he figures out she has a miraculous permanently, he could steal it. And yeah, fair enough, that's actually a good concern. If Shadow Moth wasn't an idiot, I mean, his plans have literally never worked ever, and he even stole the box once and he didn't even take any extras for himself. He just gave them all to Chloe, like an idiot. Seriously, he should have pocketed some miraculouses, particularly the rabbit and the snake. What was he thinking? Being able to control time would be a game changer for him. So yeah, whilst Marinette has a right to be worried, especially after Optigami, the reality is that she is playing chess whilst Gabriel is playing checkers. Alia then tries to reassure her, showing her how she keeps the necklace hidden and tricks in a little fanny pack. Tiki hits Marinette with the good old I told you so, whilst Alia storms out angrily because nobody's answered the phone that's been ringing the whole scene. She answers it and Shadow Moth's on the line doing his best impersonation of a serial killer, informing Alia that Senti Bubbler, who appears in the house at this point in time, has kidnapped Marinette, Nino, and her family and placed them in bubbles in the skies of Paris. And for some reason the tarantula is included in the ransom hostages as well, because that's normal. Shadow Moth then tells her that in order for her to save her family and friends, she has to betray Ladybug. Meanwhile, we see Marinette panicking in her bubble that she can't transform and deciding to text Alia about Senti Bubbler being a Senti monster. But of course, Bubbler steals Alia's phone. And Shadow Moth's actually doing well so far with his plans recently. First Optigami, and now this. He's doing a pretty good job. At Adrian's place, a news report plays, alerting him to the appearance of the Senti Bubbler in the last five minutes, and kind of calling him out and Ladybug for not having shown up yet. I mean... Paris is big. Are they seriously expected to be able to just appear out of thin air within seconds? Let's be realistic here, news lady, and give them more than five minutes to show before you start saying things like, oh, I'm surprised no heroes have turned up yet. Come on now. Cat Noir then powers up, and off he goes. Shadow Moth then goes over his plan to Alia that Ladybug will arrive to help and give Alia the Fox Miraculous, and then Senti Bubble will catch her in a bubble. Alia will then become Rena Rouge and use Mirage to create a fake Rena and Ladybug to distract Cat Noir so he can be captured. And then, she'll give him her Miraculous, and everybody will be safe. If not, he'll send the bubbles into space. So basically, he'll kill a whole family. Serial killer indeed. Seriously, the little kids are what, four, five years old? I mean, he could be bluffing, but I doubt it. The guy's shown no semblance of remorse in a long, long time. Gabe is certainly going down the path to becoming a full-on psycho. And honestly, I'm kind of here for it. It adds stakes and kind of shows how being so devoted to the plan for an extended period of time would have a significant impact on your moral judgement and what you perceive as evil. Also, it would have actually been a good plan if you'd picked anybody other than Ladybug's second in command. If he actually knew Alia's personality at all, he would know that she would never betray the trust of a friend. I mean, he could have used someone different like Chloe. Maybe do some background research next time, mate. And before I continue, don't get heated that I called Alia Ladybug's second in command thinking that that's Cat Noir. Cat Noir's not a second in command, he's an equal partner. It's different. Anyway, whilst Marinette continues to panic in her bubble, Cat Noir tries to get in contact with her, and Alia prepares to utterly ruin Shadow Moth's plan. Like, completely obliterate it in mere minutes. Like, she's going to thoroughly outfox him. She starts off her cunning plan by telling Senti Bubbler she needs to use the bathroom, convincing him by telling him that Ladybug would be suspicious if she was busting to pee, but just standing there and not doing anything about it. She then fake trips and knocks down the table, allowing her to transform and make a fake Alia go into the bathroom while she heads into the bedroom. After giving Trix some grapes, and side note, Trix eating grapes soothed my soul, she retransforms and calls Cat Noir and tells him that she and Ladybug have a plan, but he doesn't need to be involved. He gets mad, she hangs up, 
and then she creates a new mirage to create a fake ladybug to trick the Sentibubbler. Meanwhile, Cat Noir reveals he actually has pretty bad anger management issues after he destroys a random chimney before noticing the fake ladybug and following her thinking that he can help, despite that not being the plan. Definitely laying out the groundwork for some jealousy and insecurity on Cat Noir's point of view. Back in the apartment, the fake Alia comes out of the bathroom after what has been far longer than 30 seconds, while Sentibubbler goes to hide so that he can ambush Ladybug. Meanwhile, Marinette moves her bubble to be close to Cat Noir and warn him that it's all an illusion and not to interfere. But side note, I'm sorry, with Cat Noir's superpowers, there's no way that Marinette would ever be able to catch up to him, essentially doggy paddling in a floating bubble. It's like when you're keeping a balloon in the air. It moves incredibly slow. She'd never catch him. Fake Ladybug turns up and Rena Rouge makes her two illusions discuss how Alia can't inherit the Fox Miraculous anymore because Shadow Moth knows who she is and it's too dangerous. Fake Ladybug then tells Fake Alia that she's going to find another new hero to give them an even more powerful Miraculous to help save her family. Leaving Shadow Moth excited at the idea of getting an even more powerful Miraculous. But dude, you already know all of them. And it's another reminder that he had all of them at the end of Season 3 and lost all of them. Nice. Smooth brain. Shadow Moth and Sentibubble follow after Fake Ladybug, which gives Cat Noir the realization that he needs to attack them to prevent the illusion disappearing. He attacks Bubbler and has a little bit of back and forth while Shadow Moth keeps chasing Fake Ladybug. Meanwhile, Rena Rouge deactivates the illusion and Shadow Moth once again runs out of luck as he finds himself alone in a random back alley. Dude just can't catch a break, even when his plans are actually good. Cat Noir, finding himself relegated to the show's third most important hero, gets bubbled breaks himself out with a cataclysm and rebubbled as he dives straight down whilst doing flips for style points. Also, has anyone else noticed that Cat Noir's gotten way more intellectually challenged when fighting villains these days? Sure, his fighting against Sentibubbler was cool and shows that he's capable, but then he makes decisions so impulsively and sometimes completely void of any logical thinking. Remember when he decided to score a goal at the football stadium with the Miraculous Box? Then there was even that new trailer where Ladybug and all the other heroes are grouped together and Cat Noir's lagging behind, shaking something off his foot looking lame. I swear he wasn't always like this. Rina Rouge then pulls a big brain move and uses Mirage to create a second Marinette inside her bubble whilst making the real Marinette invisible. Marinette then powers up and uses her lucky charm to create a pot and realizes that the Sentimonts is being controlled by a random coffee cup. She then unifies the horse and Ladybug to become Pegabug. Another miraculous combo which was pretty cool. I mostly liked her costume, but the glasses and the little wings on the side of her head kind of take away from it. Meanwhile, Shadow Moth decides to force Ladybug to come out and decides to kill the hostages by sending them into space. What a reasonable man. His wife is going to be very proud when she wakes up to know he decided murdering children was a good trade for her life. And then Pegabug pulls her own big brain move, portaling in behind Shadow Moth and stealing the cup whilst lowering the horse sunglasses and giving him the gotcha look. Shadow Moth is really just taking owls left and right today. And it's pretty hilarious looking at how disappointed he is with being outclassed once again by a teenager. Pegabug uses the cup to command Sentibubbler to return the hostages, so instead of admitting defeat and running away, Shadow Moth decides to keep trying to kill people and cancels the Senti monster, destroying the bubbles and forcing Marinette to swoop in and save the day with a yo-yo. Once again, Shadow Moth is just such a wholesome and kind man. And then the pot's used to capture the spider again. And yeah, I'm not really sure why the spider was even in a bubble. And also, Ladybug's lucky charm was the most random and arguably irrelevant lucky charm that's ever appeared in an episode. Yes, they're usually random, but they also have a very niche use to aid the heroes considerably in defeating the villains. This one was literally so she didn't have to touch the spider with her bare hands. And I don't really see how it helped her save the day. In Optigami, she said that Lucky Charms always help her save the day, but I really don't see how this was the case in this episode. Oh well. Back in Alia's room, Alia tells Marinette that she tricked Shadow Moth into thinking that she won't have the fox again, so we don't have to deal with Gabriel stalking a teenager anymore. Hooray! And honestly, Alia's really proved herself as a competent hero alongside Ladybug and Cat Noir. Marinette's been feeling pretty insecure with her guardian role, and Alia just keeps stepping up to the plate and actually improving the situation, so props to her. And then there's a funny post credit scene with Gabriel crying about how Ladybug literally never makes mistakes. And yeah, I get it. Fair enough. Bad luck. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the episode, and I thought it was pretty good. I guarantee some people didn't like the Cat Noir look like a chump for the second episode in a row, but at least somebody besides Ladybug did something useful. That being said, those are just my thoughts, and now I'd like to hear yours. Did you enjoy the episode? Maybe not? Make sure to leave a comment and let me know.